Welcome back and thanks for Metrocasting with us. Electricity, some would say, makes life for us in this day and age go round and round. Well, we found a group of young people who have taken their interest in electricity to an electrifying new level. What you are watching is a lightning bolt generated not from the sky, but from a man-made device known as a Tesla coil. This particular Tesla coil was created by a few like-minded individuals and friends in the Burwick area. They were kind enough to show off their hard work and knowledge. It's a cool effect. Uh, it, it, the device itself has limited practical use. I mean, you can use it as a really expensive, you know, marshmallow roaster. But uh, as far as practical use, it doesn't really have a whole lot. Now, the principles upon which it works, though, are required for a lot of our modern electronics. Radio communications, uh, television, you know, all those things work on this same resonance effect. Invented in the late 1800s by this man, Nikola Tesla, a Hungarian immigrant who came to America in 1884, the Tesla coil was created to further his research and dreams of sending electricity wirelessly over great distances, if not completely around the world. Along the way, one of his many creations changed the world forever. Tesla is credited with creating the world's first alternating current, or AC, generator, which continues to power everything in your home, including the television or computer you're watching this on right now. But as Scott said, the Tesla coil serves no real purpose other than to create an awesome yet dangerous effect that's been used mainly as a science project or in the movies like in the old Frankenstein films. And that brings us back to Scott and his friends. Basically, it takes wall voltage at 120 volts or in some countries 240 and it boosts it up to about 500,000 volts via the resonant rise effect. Uh, basically, what happens is it works kind of like a, a bell. When you strike it, it makes like one tone that will keep on lingering after, you know, you're done striking it. And the same thing works electrically between the capacitor and the primary coil, you get this resonance effect. And then between the secondary coil and the top load, you get another resonance. So every time that resonance gets multiplied, your voltage gets hugely increased. And it creates what? High voltage lightning. Most of, most of the work I've done was with Scott with trial and error on how to get to where he is now. There's a whole lot of failed parts and a whole lot of wasted time essentially put into something like this. Um, neither of us are the most diligent researchers, so we kind of just want to like get the basic information and go try it, not necessarily sit down and calculate everything out, which probably would have been smarter, but it's like second and third order differential calculus for stuff like this, so we're not too keen on doing that in our spare time. I, I built most of it. Um, I was basically the technical advisor. I just, I used all the power tools and put everything together. Scott would explain what he wanted and we'd work together and get it done. Now before you start thinking these three are literally playing with lightning, you should know all three do have a background in engineering or mechanics. Scott, for instance, went to Penn State where he studied mechanical engineering and all three say they know exactly how dangerous it is. It's very dangerous. It depends. If you get hit by the long secondary arcs, that's actually the most safe thing to get hit by. Um, there's a wrong way to do it and a right way to do it. And if you do it the wrong way, you know, you hold on to it long enough, eventually your blood's going to start boiling. It's not something to mess with. But if you do it the right way, it's perfectly safe. But if you get hit by the spark gap, if your hand is in there when it fires, it, you're pretty much guaranteed death. Like, it's a lot of energy, like 100 times more than a defibrillator uses. I'm actually terrified of electricity. I once got shocked by an oil burner ignition transformer, which is 10,000 volts, through a 2x4. So the, the, the rule to remember is that when you get to high voltage, there's no such thing as an insulator, just bad conductors. I couldn't imagine how low voltages went through things. Like, as far as they were talking about wood, uh, you really don't need near as much voltage as you think to go through a piece of wood. And the fact that once you once electricity establishes a pathway through the wood, it will go back to it. The only other difference would be if we use plastics. And plastics are shot in the dark, because if they have any carbon in them, if they're black and they use carbon, they short out. Certain plastics have the other chemicals in that short out, so that's kind of a toss-up too. We just start we're just starting to find ones that don't have it. Obviously, with all the electrical energy being produced in the air, other devices are going to be affected. 
Scott says numerous remote garage door openers have been fried during their experiments and that in one instance, the wireless energy produced by the Tesla coil actually resurrected something in his house. We used to have this little toy fire truck that when you would hit it on the hood, it would make a fire whistle noise. Well, that was when I was like eight years old and the battery died and it got thrown in the bottom of a toy chest, it just sat there. Well, when I was running my small coil in the basement, one day it just came back to life and started making this noise in the bottom of the toy chest. It was an amazing thing. We used to have dial-up internet and it was the surefirest way to disconnect the dial-up internet was to turn it on even for just a second. Nikola Tesla himself was notorious for creating havoc when he set off his own devices, which were monstrous when compared to this particular coil. In fact, in Colorado Springs, Tesla's electrification techniques routinely caused sparks to come up through the ground sparks to fly off fire hydrants, and once he blacked out the entire city and grounded out all the plumbing. In summing up, Scott, Nathan, and Jason now just get together to have some electrifying fun with their friends. Interesting lads to say the least. A reminder though that electricity again is nothing to be toyed with. It is dangerous, even deadly, so please do not try this at home if you don't have some training or some background in electricity. In the meantime, that being said, Scott does have a website if you're interested in more information about his Tesla coil. When we come back, we're going to hit the dusty trail for our final segment. Oh, and before we take a break, one more thing. Building a Tesla coil is not Scott Bogart's only talent. He also says he's been on several national television shows over the years, most notably Jay Leno and Regis and Kelly. This for having a cheesy talent he displayed in a Pizza Hut contest. Watch my eyes. Okay, now watch my lips. I can't believe you didn't win this. Yeah, I got third runner up. This oh, is the funny wild. thing. What if somebody okay. had to beat that? You did right. the tongue thing too? Yeah, the tongue thing. Watch. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe he didn't win. Can you? We'll be back. <laughs> 